Well, this request uh, says, um, there's one thing I can't get my head around. Even with all your explanations about intensity, it still eludes me. For example, you said that burnt sienna is low intensity orange and that yellow ochre is low intensity yellow orange. I see it as brown and, brown and beige. Please explain. Well, we'll see what we can do to get my head around that. Well, think about all the names we have for color. Uh, if you walk into a paint store, names of color, millions almost it seems sometimes, but names that we hear, brown, beige, gold, all those, and then and that's one category of names we hear, and then we've got our tube colors, the names on our tube colors. We have burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw umber, burnt umber, uh, Venetian red, and it just goes on and on. So yes, that could be very conf confusing if you're having trouble mixing color. So you call it a beige. What colors do would you mix to get beige? How do you know that? Uh, if you call it brown, what colors do you mix to get brown? And besides, there are many shades of brown. There are some browns that are a little darker and redder, and some that are a little uh, maybe lighter and oranger and still call it brown? What is an artist to do? Well, I'm going to take you right back to the color wheel because that's where I always go. As a painter, color is one of your main ingredients. It's color that gives you the expression of your painting. Other things too, of course, but color is one of the most important ones that creates the painting for you or at your guidance. So, doesn't it make sense to know what the color is made of? And doesn't it make sense to go back to what that color really is as far as the names of color, the actual generic names of color? Red. There's no question about what red is. Red, orange, yellow, those colors. Every color wheel lists them in some way. The more traditional color wheels list them by the names we know them to be. Those are the names that identify the hue that makes that color either brown or burnt sienna or beige or olive or cyan or magenta, teal. You just name all the color names you know. But we have one way of identifying them that will always get you to the right place. And that is the names that appear here. Now there's something else. For every one of these names, we have a variety of opportunities or availabilities of a color. For every single one of these colors, these hues, we have varieties. And that's where all those other names come from. Beige, for example, starts with yellow. And then yellow gets reduced in intensity. And then it usually beige is thought of as a lighter color. And so then that appears and someone calls it beige and then so on and so on. Well, let's start with this. How many variations on any single hue can you get and still call it that hue? Now, it doesn't work to think of orange this way. Say so so if I'm if I'm if I'm explaining color to you and I say orange, this is probably what you're thinking, something like that. Well, that's only one orange. So what happens to what happens to orange if I add a, a, a darker orange to it? In other words, I shouldn't say darker orange. That's sort of misleading. What if I darken it a bit? What if I do this? What is this? That's still an orange. This now begins to get, it's darker in value, 
But that would get a generic name. Somebody would call that something, but a painter would call it a darker, lower intensity orange. So I suppose let's add a little bit more of this is a um, the tube color I'm using here is the Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Red. It is a red orange. It's still in the orange family. So I add the red orange to orange and you might start calling that brown. Do you call it brown yet? Suppose I just take the, uh, the Transparent Oxide Red just by itself. Now you'd probably call that brown, wouldn't you? Well, it's not going to get you anywhere as a painter. That is a red orange, falls right here on the color wheel, but there is your lower intensity. We use the word intensity, we use the word chroma, and we use the word saturation. We have three words that painters use to describe the same thing. And what it means is that some of the hue has been taken from it, but there's still enough hue there to identify it. All right, let's try something, something else with that. Let's just pull some white down here. And we, I just automatically already added some orange to it. So let's add a little bit more of orange to that white right there. And let me rinse the brush out here and ask you what we have now. So I have used those, I have used already the three terms, but I've used the identity term to show you how to find it. All right, so what if we do this, having added white to it, what color is that? Well, some people might call that peach. All right, that's a generic description of what that particular color is, but doesn't tell you the hue. It doesn't tell you what to do with it. It is a high intensity, meaning that you can see lots of hue in it still, light value orange. Now you can't describe color without describing it in three different ways. You've got what the hue is, the hue as it registers, we call those hues by their names, and there they are on the color wheel. We have the value of the color, that tells you how light or how dark it is. And we have the intensity, the saturation, the chroma, all three mean the same thing of the color. So, suppose I do this. Suppose we take what we have here as the orange that is a light value orange, light orange, high intensity. We can see a good bit of orange in it. And suppose we add its complement to it. So I'll reach right here. Now, if, if I just add a blue, we know, see, see we find the complement always on traditional color wheels. We find the complement always directly across from the colors we're using. So we're in the orange range and we know we need to reach for our blue. Now if I reach for blue by itself, this may be what's throwing you off. If I reach for blue by itself and I mix into that, it's going to get it darker in value. You see that? It's going to get it darker in value. See right here. And, and then it throws you off. Well, if you will ad adjust the value of your complement first, which will help in, in mixing the paint, and get the value of your complement the same value or in the same value range, and you probably have heard this before if you've been watching Quick Tips, as the complement that you're mixing it into. Now you see these two are close in value. Now suppose I mix a little bit of this into this. Now what am I doing? I'm not changing its value. Not changing its value. I am subtracting hue. I'm changing the hue, and now it is a different intensity. And so, now we'll rinse the brush out really, really good, and dry it really, really good so that you can see what I have there. All right, let's look, let's look at what happened this time. It's still orange, but you can see it's changed. Now you might begin to call that beige. Or somebody would call it something else. I, uh, you might even, some people call that skin tone now. I don't believe in skin tones. Uh, that's another subject, another topic. And somebody will probably request a quick tip on that. But suppose we add a little bit more of that to it. And see, is it still going to be orange? It's still orange. This is still orange. Just because I changed the intensity doesn't change the hue. The hue remains the same. There's just not as much of it. 
So when you're able to look at something like this and detect, detect orange in it or the orange family in it, even if it leans more towards the yellow orange, it's still in the orange family. If you can detect that, you know what the hue is and you can start with that hue and then begin to add the complement into that hue at the same value and you'll get that color. So you see, you may call it beige, you may call this beige. Uh, some people might call it yellow ochre. Well, it's, it's a little bit, yes, it's very close to yellow ochre. But see, none of those describe what it is. They just tell you the label of a particular uh, shade or a particular combination of hue, value, and intensity. So painters need to make that distinction. And let me uh, just uh, get this newer version of the, uh, this is desaturated. Uh, let's get a little bit more desaturated. Let's see what we can do here. There we go. That's a little, see that even, even beige you might say. <laughs> even more beige. Let's see how much of that blue we can continue to add and still have that. There we go. Now it begins to change. It begins to go more neutral there. And it begins to lose. You see we're losing hue right here. But you might still call that beige. You can call it whatever you want to. It doesn't change the fact that it's really orange. Okay, so what we've done so far, we've just created a bunch of oranges. But we have different variations of oranges. Now as a painter, if you know that you can look at any of those and see this in them. You can detect this in them. If you can't detect it with just bare eyes, get your color wheel out. Get your color wheel out and just align the color wheel. And you see as I align the edges of the color wheel. Now be sure it's a traditional color wheel and be sure it's accurate. Because there are a lot of crappy color wheels out there. And some of them are just, you know, uh, doing all kinds of crazy things with color. You want a traditional one that shows you these relationships. So if you don't have one, go to our website, dyingmice.com. Click on free stuff in the menu. And you'll and curse it down. You'll see several, several kinds of color wheels there. Get yourself a free, this will be the PDF. You can print it out. And cut the center out of it so that you've got something to work with. Now, uh, if I begin to hold my color wheel up to, to any one of these. I can hold my color wheel. I see it's not green, it's not blue, it's not any of that. It's not violet, it's not red. It's As I begin to turn it around, begin to see, I begin to feel that the orange is in there. Now, these very desaturated colors that almost lose all their hue can be difficult to detect at first. But you can, and once you get accustomed to using that method of detecting color, detecting the hue, you will eventually be able to see it. You, we look at it and say, okay, that's not more yellow, it's not more red, I really see more orange in there. And you can test it out. You, at least you know where to start. You'll know to start right in this area right here to test it by getting its value first. And, and then check by adding, if you need to, uh, start adding the desaturation to it to change the intensity. So I hope that little bit of explanation, by the way, and if you do this exercise I just showed you, it, it, then it gets more meaningful. Remember that when you're doing the exercise, your goal is to keep it orange. You can make these changes in value, and you can make these changes in saturation. It's still going to be orange. So you can say burnt sienna all day long, it's still orange. Uh, you can say brown all day long, a brown that leans more towards orange like that is still orange. You can, <laughs> and I can keep going like that with all the generic names and the tube colors and whatever. It's still in the orange range, it's still in the orange family. So if you start with what the hue is, or with the hue family at least, because the it, hues do fall into families. They build themselves around the primary and secondary color, the families do. So the orange, we have the yellow orange and we have red orange. And we have a lot of variations of, of hue from yellow orange all over to red orange. All that can get, is the orange family and you can detect it very generally like that. Or it might be in the violet family or it might be in the yellow family which is a primary family. It might be yellow leaning towards orange or yellow leaning towards green. So detect the hue first or get in the family and then begin experimenting with it and if, if, if what you're observing is darker 
then you'll know to try to darken it first to see is that the color you're getting or if it's if it's uh you can see very little of that hue in there then you'll know that you're adding the complement at the same value into it if you do practice sessions like that where that is your intention simply to explore those variations of color and come up with the color you're looking at no matter what it's called you can come up with any color by using that method give it a try now and see if that doesn't uh, enable you to get your head around it be sure and view all of our quick tips and while you're doing so subscribe to the channel click on the bell so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip which is every week and if you have a question leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you also, take a trip over to DyingMinds.com where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.